Hello! We have two stories today. And our first, well, have you ever heard of the saying, work hard, play hard? I like to live by this maxim. But we have a pretty outrageous lady in our first story that says, work harder for her and risk your backs for no extra pay, just so she doesn't have to see the help. So basically, just work harder and forget about your playing, peasants, because the lady of the house insists. Story one. Apologies for the long read, but I really wanted to make sure I properly captured the haughtiness of the customer in this story. About 30 or so years ago, I dropped out of high school. My first job was as a truck jockey for a bloke who owned his own removal truck and had a delivery contract with a local chain of furniture stores. The work was hard. Days were usually pretty long. I have an old payslip somewhere for an 84-hour work week. But I was young, fit, and healthy and the work saved me from needing a gym membership. Plus, the cash was really good for a 16-year-old kid. One long, reasonably warm Saturday, we're heading to our last delivery before going home. It was close to 6 p.m., and we'd still have an approximately 45 to 60-minute drive home after, so the boss was in no mood for screwing around. The delivery was in Melbourne's, at the time probably still is, wealthiest suburb, Turok. Lots of big houses and old money. Anyway, we rock up at this place and the boss heaves a sigh of relief. Massive double entry doors at the front. We were delivering a three seater sofa bed. Those things were heavy with the metal fold out bed inside, so anything that made the delivery that little bit easier was seen as a positive. As usual, the boss hops into the back of the truck and starts unwrapping the load to get it onto the tailgate, while I go knock on the door, clipboard in hand. I ring the bell old-fashioned turn the brass handle thing and a butler opens the door? I see just over his shoulder a massive entry hall with a big wide staircase leading up to the second story. Awesome. He answers the door with, yes. G'day, we're here to deliver a sofa bed for, I check my clipboard, Mrs. Rich Snob, name change to protect the rich snob and cause I can't remember and don't care. He gestures to the right of the house. Delivery entrance is around the side. Oh, okay. I trot around to the side door, thinking it would be a straight-up delivery into a room nearer to that door. I wait, and he eventually opens the door. Per our standard operating procedure, I ask him to show me where the furniture was going so I could map the route out for the boss. He gestures to, I'm genuinely not kidding, a tiny spiral staircase. Up those stairs? Yes, but I notice there's a lot more room at the front doors, plus the bigger staircase there. Can we deliver via that route instead? The lady of the house wishes for it to be delivered via the rear staircase. Really? There's no way we're getting that sofa bed up there without hurting ourselves, or the furniture, or house. Why can't we deliver via the front? The lady of the house simply will not permit it. Okay. I'll go let my boss know. By the time I get back to the truck, the boss has the sofa sitting on the tailgate, ready for us to carry it in. Ready? Not quite. You're not going to believe it, but they want us to deliver via a side entrance and up a spiral staircase. The F they do? Yep. Old mate in the suit and tie said so. How many times did you ask him? I'm not sure why this matters. But I say, a couple? Wasn't sure I heard him right the first time, but he said the customer won't allow it. Nah, bullwash, wait here. The boss strides up to the front door and rings the bell, perhaps a little aggressively. Butler opens it. Words are exchanged. The boss gets pretty heated and demands to see the customer, Mrs. Rich Snob. What's all this nonsense? Your fella here said we can deliver through these doors and up that staircase behind you. The other way is too narrow. We'll bust our backs trying to get it up there. That's not my concern. My desire is for the furniture to be delivered via the side entrance. Nah, we're not doing that. Just let us go this way and we'll be out of your hair in no time. I insist that you deliver the furniture in accordance with the terms of the contract. Cue malicious compliance. The boss straightens up, squares his shoulders. Okay, sure. No worries. We'll get it done. As you said, in accordance with the delivery contract. He walks back towards me, massive grin on his face, and tells me to grab the highlighter, fluorescent marker, from the cab. I go grab it and hand it to him. 
He highlights something on the delivery docket on the clipboard, tosses it onto the sofa, and gestures at me to grab my end. I'm wondering what is about to go down, but I know my boss well enough to know we aren't about to carry this bloody thing through a side door and up a spiral staircase. As we get near the front doors, the boss tells me we're putting the sofa bed down. He grabs the clipboard and politely asks Mrs. Richsnob to sign for delivery. I'm not signing anything yet. You haven't delivered it to where I want it. Uh, but we have now. Please read the section I've highlighted. After she reads said bit, Oh, well that changes things. Through the front doors will be fine. Sorry, please read the second highlighted section. As she's reading second said bit, But I've changed my mind. Sorry, as you can see, it says that deliveries must be made the safest way possible without risking injury to us. And if we still disagree after three attempts at making delivery, the customer takes responsibility for completing the delivery from the front of the premises. We asked four times, so as you requested, I'm delivering per the terms of the delivery contract you signed. She starts going red. But how am I supposed to get this upstairs? I'm afraid that's no longer my problem, ma'am. Please sign the delivery docket so we can get out of your hair. I took that as my cue to get lost pack up the wraps and straps, and prep the truck for departure. We managed to hold in our laughter until the end of the driveway. In the comments, Voyager 7 said, Always, always make sure you know what the contract says. OP replied, Ha ha, my boss certainly did. Exact Reward added, My biggest fear is always the other side lying. How does your boss go about making sure he did try the three attempts? I hated it when it becomes he says, she says kind of thing. And the rich snob refuses to sign for delivery, regardless. Nice malicious compliance. Tiny Octopus said, If she refuses to sign for delivery, then it doesn't get delivered. That's malicious compliance escalation. OP replied, You got it. If she didn't sign, we'd have taken the sofa back. Exact reward added, And to follow up, just for giggles, what would be the consequence if you and your boss have to take it back? I'm just curious to see how far your boss would have taken it if the rich snob decided to go all in. You know, an alternate ending to the rich snob screwing herself over more than she already did. OP replied, well, that's the beauty of it. If we'd taken it back, it would have stayed wrapped and strapped in the truck until Monday morning, when we hit the depot again. She'd have been contacted to arrange and pay for another delivery, or have the option of traveling to the other side of town to pick it up herself. The dispatch manager was one of the sons of the family and a great guy. The boss would have made sure he had all the details, so we could have a robust conversation about the lady's attitude toward facilitating a more expedient delivery the second time. Can I just say that I love that this company built in assurances for the safety of their staff right in the contract. I feel like that's not something you see every day, and certainly not something you read about on Reddit. They proactively armed their delivery staff with the ability to deal with all sorts of crazy requests. And crazy people. This one, though? This one is just gross. The old money reference is really the key piece here. This lady's brain is obviously in some sort of time capsule. It sounds like Downton Abbey style to me. They probably have the mail delivered at the back of the house, and heaven forbid, hired help even rings the front doorbell. Our second story asks what happens when you mix someone with a whole lot of ego the stubbornness of a donkey, and high heat. (sniffs) Do I smell smoke? Am I having a stroke? Oh no, whew, it's just wafting out of our next tale. Story two. Background. Let me take you back into my past. Again, I'm in the kitchen in a large culinary catering company. You get these more often than most. A diva in the kitchen. Could be a cook, a chef, or someone with a lot of attitude. Let me introduce you, Chef Smokey. Reason explained in a moment. At the time, he was a line cook with some attitude issues. He had just joined on with us, and he acted like he was going to be the next top chef in this company. He came over to our main line, looked things over, and then he came to the prep zone. Now, the difference in the prep zone and main line is the type of burners. On the main line, we have gas ranges, six in fact. In the prep zone, we have almost all L-shaped counters with induction burners set up. On unusually swamp nights, the prep zone will handle appetizers for the main line. The story. Here comes Chef Smokey about to take the lead on appetizers. Myself and one other person are working hard but apparently not smart enough. 
So Chef Smokey grabs multiple pans and puts them on the induction burners. He revs them up super high and adds his olive oil. Now, there are two glitches in this scenario. Issue one. Induction burners, these older ones, use specific pans and special setup to work. So they can be temperamental when they do work. And if you use the wrong pan, either the pan won't work or they act up. Issue two. Olive oil smokes faster than the normal canola vegetable or mixed oil we have on site. Recipe calls for olive oil. We don't pump our induction burners to super high, especially when you're using pans not made for it. The pans work, but they can run super hot, overload the induction burner, or not work at all. He sprays oil into all five pans he has on super high. He gives us a super conceited look. So I say, you might not want to zip it says Chef Smokey, but you seriously might not just be quiet and watch. With all respect, you... I reach to lower the settings on the induction. He spanks my hand. Just stand there and be quiet. Cue malicious compliance. Okay, learn the hard way, I think. Chef Smokey starts his first pan dropping his appetizer to cook. It comes out great, but as he reaches for his second pan, the oil has already insta-burned. Pans 3, 4, and 5 also have burning oil. They're smoking. So, being a resilient, smart, and problem-solving human he is, he wipes the pans and sprays oil in them. Oil insta-burns. Okay, he tries a new tactic. Chef Smokey drops oil and then drops his appetizer material at the same moment. Nice try. His appetizers insta-burn because his oil was already burning. He goes through this cycle about three times of burning product pretty fast. He was getting raging peeved. So I try to stop him, but he's got to try one last time. Burns it again. He lays his oil in his pans again. I lean in and say, hey, Smokey the Bear, your oil's burning again. The aftermath. Chef Smokey backs off. Then it's each man to a pan. Heat turned to the moderate level. Chef Smokey starts the reprep of the lost product he had burned through. Let me note, he burned most of the day's product, so he was going to spend the day reprepping. He spent a good day silent. The guys in the kitchen used the nickname I gave him. Some called him Smokey the Bear, some called him Chef Smokey. And it stuck till he quit. In the comments, Ultimo said, he was smoked out. OP replied, ha ha, he only lasted a year with us after the incident. The staff still had confidence in him, but the other kids, the chefs, still teased him daily. I kept some tabs on this guy. He's still chefing as an independent contractor and side gigging as a tax preparer. Think that's pandemic related though. Meow ha ha said, odd fact. There is no canola plant. Canola comes from rapeseed, which is probably impossible to market profitably. Storm Beyond Time added, I heard the name change came about because they needed a marketing name. The story is that can comes from Canada and Ola means oil. Fumbling Vista said, Ola equals oil, low, acid. I don't know if it's Chef Ramsay that has instilled this thought in me, but I kind of think of a kitchen as the wild and it really is survival of the fittest. You can have ego, but it has to come after skill. If you have zero skill and you're all ego, you get chewed up and spit out. And just for giggles, here are some top quotes from Chef Ramsay. This lamb is so undercooked, it's following Mary to school. (laughs) This pizza is so disgusting, if you take it to Italy, you'll get arrested. There's enough garlic in here to kill every vampire in Europe. Not possible. I love garlic. There's no such thing as too much garlic. Ooh, this one is mean. This is a really tough decision. Because you're both crap. (laughs) Why did the chicken cross the road? Because you didn't effing cook it. You put so much ginger in this, it's a Weasley. That one's my favorite. All this kitchen talk has made me hungry. Thanks for joining me today. Ta-ta for now. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.